Wei Song Xian. What's up to our matriarchy out there? Guess who's back from Bavaria? The boys are back. Yeah, it's Chrissy Cream Puff Tits and Yanni fucking Bratwurst Poppy. Papas, we were in Germany, in Bavaria, in Austria, and let me tell you something. We fucking had a great time. And I'm, it was just good to go see Germany and see what the USA, the fucking boys, <laughs> did to that country because they fucking deserved it. Is it fair to say that we went wild? Because we Make went, no mistake. Make no mistake. I'm on three cups of coffee right now writing paragraphs to girls' inboxes on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going, whoa, 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 You did just go wild. I went wild. I mean, I saw I, one, one chick that actually had a job just DM'd me. You just don't know how to talk to girls with jobs. I can't. Yeah, Yanni yeah. made that very clear. <laughs> Yanni, I can't talk to a girl with a job. And she and I just fucking flipped out. And, uh, you know, I ruined it, and it's just what it is. I got new furniture, and it's all okay. You, uh, the text that you sent, you just sent like four paragraphs four times. Like you're a first grader, and you've never talked to a girl before. Should I send her a message? No, you okay. have to stop now. Because... <laughs> Yeah. Wei Song Xian. You yeah. can only, yeah, you can only talk to girls where the first messages she's just sending you, uh, the back of her ass. Yeah, and then but, you send a couple of cucumber emojis, and that's it. And the remote deck. That's what it is. A girl who could put together a sentence, you don't know what to do with that. Cause we had a fucking wild time. You. You smoked a pack of cigarettes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wei Song Xian. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what yeah. that. What are you doing? And then, yeah. You're not, that was supposed to be our secret. Oh shit. I would say cut that out, but we know Zach's gonna forget. Yeah. Do you know uh, how funny it must be for the people listening to hear every time we say Zach cut that out? Yeah. It's just right in there. I mean, last week, <laughs> what what got on the podcast? I'm gonna get destroyed in court for. I mean, <laughs> yeah. hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Am I too old to enjoy that? No, listen, farts are fucking funny. I know yeah. they're easy laughs. I get the easy I don't did the best. No, I, I get the easy But we laughs. are probably the only podcast where the guys every time they have a fart, yeah. stop whatever's going on and we fart to these microphones. Make no mistake, <laughs> this is a studio that all the podcasts that Riotcast use. Yeah. We fart into these microphones on the regular. Yeah, but you know what? It's like people who always want to like flip out, like, oh, you fart on the mic. It's like, it's fucking air, okay? There's no shit particles that are going to get through the barrier of my asshole, <laughs> plus my ass warts, plus my underwear, plus my shorts onto yeah. the mic. Yeah. So it's like, if you're someone who's complaining about a fart on the mic, it's like, just it, stop trying to make it about you. Well, that's because you got big cheeks. Yeah. So it, the fart kind of goes right to the top yeah. and then recedes like a wave and on I, short tide. I have an innie asshole, not an outie. <laughs> I have an innie. <laughs> but let's talk about, let's start by talking. We visited Bavaria, and I just want to. Munich, Germany, which is Bavaria. Yeah. And we went on an upper deck tour bus. On, I mean, we hit so many tours. Did I, pull, did I do well with the tours? I mean, you are a veteran, but you wanted to fart. You were trying to get yeah. a fart. And you pushed and you peed in your pants. So that happened in Bavaria where Chris just squirted in his own pants. Wow. Can I just tell you? Can I just say that long message I sent? Yeah. Why not put it out to the public, Chris? <laughs> no, no, why no, not? I'm not going to say that long message I sent. She just double tapped hard in it. No response. Wow. So I'll just never message her again. Yeah, I think you want to lay back in the cut now. <laughs> Should I just write I'm sorry? I think she's contacting the authorities. Should I just write I'm sorry? Just don't no. write anything. I, I, no, you got to let it go now at this point, Chris. What do you think, Zach? I think you should write I'm sorry because that, that would just take it funnier. Yeah, if you say I'm sorry, I mean, then she's, uh, I mean, she might contact the authorities. Or you could just say I saw you liked it. What's up? Yeah, are you, Chris, are you really writing? No, it's no, no, a bad no. idea. I'm just going to have to never talk to her again and yeah. probably unfollow her and everything, right? I mean, I'm just going to have to forget she exists. Cuz, you live two beers in. Any other normal person has had two full Hefeweizens. Yeah. 
to live the way you live. That's just how you live. You go, you get up, and you go. You're a hyena. You're not even a hyena. You know what you are? What? A hyena. A hyena. Because <laughs> uh, you yeah. say you say hyena like Israeli is your first language. Yeah, hyena. <laughs> hyena. <laughs> Delilah. Yeah, my daughter. What's a film? Hyena. Hyenas. Because, all right, so we toured out. Okay? We toured out bad. So, as I said on the last podcast, I found out your boy Chrissy D is only 8%. Italian and over forty percent German, but it's eight percent enough to be proud of what it, Italy means to New York City. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. Here's the deal. Here we go. Steel pipe, Chrissy, <laughs> coming at you. I was discussing this with in my own thoughts because I'm a schizophrenic. So here's the thing. Okay. If you removed Italy, if you removed Italian immigrants specifically from any major city, I'm talking about New York, Boston, uh, Chicago. The truth is, if you removed Italians, you would lose the best food, the best uh, culture. You would lose shift. You would lose your favorite movie scenes. You would lose the charm. Italians. Not only do we have the best food, we make other we make other uh, uh, cultures work. Yeah. Like the Jews are only working really hard because the Italians are collecting their fucking money. <laughs> push them around a little push bit. Push them around a little bit. You need an Italian to Because they grew up in the same neighborhoods. Push them you, around a little you bit. You need Italians to push people around and keep people on your toes. You I'm sick and tired of the arguments yeah. about you know, these other cultures or you know every other city being better than New York City. It's just Italians in New York are just number one. What if you remove, if you remove Italian culture from New York, what do you have? If you remove Italian culture from New York, you have Cleveland. <laughs> That's just what it is. That's what it separates. I know Cleveland. I know people like, oh, Cleveland has a little Italy. Yeah, no, I know. I've been there. I've been there. Okay, it's like Cleveland. Uh, what do you want me to say? It's like I'm I'm happy to have the support, but from the fans. But it's like it's not like I don't like the city. But it's like just stop trying to act like New York. We have nine million people. We really fucking. You've really gone in on Cleveland. Not Cle I didn't mean Cleveland. Yes, All right, let's you say did. Pittsburgh. No, you did. You did. You like Pittsburgh. I'm sorry actually. to Cleveland. Cleveland, look. What did we say? We said even during the day it feels like night or yeah, something. Yeah, no, Cleveland, even when it's open, it, it's, it's closed. It's closed, yeah. That's just what it is. It's what it is. Yeah, I just, I, yeah. Italians, Italians, it's a real, it's kind of the biggest factor in what makes New York the best. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is because when we were in Munich, we found ourselves in a mostly italian list culture and there was a big problem yeah also no blacks a blacks yeah. and italians which i blacks ironic, and italians ironically historically in urban areas like new york they hate each other but guess what yeah they both want to be each other and neither one wants to admit it every black friend you've ever had what's their favorite movie fucking scarface good fellas bronx tale and black and, and italian kids when i was growing up wearing starter jackets yeah. getting designs in their head yeah. wearing fucking high top rebacks yeah. listening to fucking yeah you know i like big daddy Kane. Yeah, i mean it's a good song i mean i wouldn't let my sister date him i want them out of my fucking neighborhood but it's good music yeah yeah, see, I, I agree with that. I agree with blacks and Italians being the two most important cultures to any major U.S. city. I mean, and that's what just what is. I'm trying to say. Yeah. And it's just what it is. And I know, you know, we'll get arguments. People on the Patreon, people say, hey, I heard that. You know, what hey, about... you forgot po about Czechoslovakian yeah, what culture. What about Polish? What about Vietnamese? It's like, shut up, okay? Like, I like that. I like a Vietnamese food. You know, everybody wants to cuck out and be like, a, you know, wants to go, oh, let's, let's go have a Vietnamese sandwich. That's once a week, once a month. But what are you doing three to five nights of the week? Pete's. <laughs> And what's Pete's? <laughs> Italian. Yeah. It's just what it is. The thing you're eating most nights yeah. is Italian food. What, even when you want to go fucking vegan and keto and blah, 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 blah. What do they always have a recipe for? Pete's. Let's, let's, let's be honest. The simulator, this is a game. This is a this game. Is a, everything is set up in opposition. That's why there's no sweet spot in life, right? Yeah. Whenever hey, you shout want out this, Damian Lemon for shout that. Shout out Damian Lemon. You know, you want the, the grass is always green on the other side. You get on the other side, then you miss that. It, you, there's no sweet spot. You're always yeah. hopping from one leg to the next. Yeah. So this is a, this is a game. This is a simulation, and there are certain codes that you need to decode certain perfect things within this imperfect game yes. that you can find and when you do you get to the next level it's one it of is. those things for food was the tomato yep the italians decoded the fucking tomato yeah and that is the cornerstone of the most delicious cuisine here we have in america america and guess what munich doesn't have tomatoes they don't have it germany listen is a tomato list Fu but it's also fumeless. No, it's fumeless, but you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Germany has no fumes. 
<laughs> but 2018 Germany has no fumes. 1941 Germany? Fumes. They were go? being assholes. Fumes. Fumes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the medieval fumes. Medieval time. Yeah, and then but Austria. In the medieval times, they had fumes too. But in the medieval times, they had fumes. But Germany had fumes. But Austria, Salzburg, Austria, no <laughs> fumes. <laughs> Gorgeous. You could lick off. The, yeah, Salzburg, Austria was clean. Because every guy you see in Austria, you just know in those Levi dungarees. Fumeless, fumeless. Cause you're gonna have to lead the podcast. I mean, we, I know we all you always do, but but I'm fucking. I got. I've had too much coffee. <laughs> it just hit me in a way where I can't concentrate, and I'm bugging out a little bit. Yeah. Well, I I uh, I drank half a bottle of CBD oil by accident this yeah, morning. I told him to put a, a drop under his tongue. He fucking took a whole syringe full. Cause you are your life is a candle that's being burned at both ends. You're okay, wait a bit. Now, she, can I just hold yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. She I mean, liked what are we, it. Third grade. She liked it. She double tap liked it, and then she wrote, "Sounds good." Yeah. It's still, not, it's still not, it's still bad. I, I don't know, cause, but it doesn't sound good. Let me see how long your message is. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And there's like two of them. Yo, cause yours looks like an internet agreement. Scroll to the bottom and click yes. Yeah. Holy, and hers is just looks like either decline or or accept. Wow, you're losing it, cuz. So what do I do here to rectify this? You just leave it alone for now, cuz we're doing a podcast, so we're right in the middle of entertaining people. Here, Here's... <laughs> <laughs> Wei Song Xiang. Yes. Wei Song Xiang. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, all right. Let, let me focus, let me focus. Go ahead. Ta- the just boys talk. went to Bavaria. Listen, Mar- make no mistake, we're going to have a show one day. Or we're going to be doing live podcasts one day where we go to your place, wherever you live, or every place in the world. The hyenas will come, and we will learn the history of that place and do a live show there. Because all we want to do is tour, and Chrissy wants to pitch a show to the Food Network called I Shouldn't Eat This. Yeah. Yeah. Because you eat a lot of fucking shit you should not eat. eat. You are way off the wagon. I fell off the fucking wagon. I would say every single day in Germany, I had to sweat. You had to sweat. Because Germans are good at chocolates. They are good at chocolates, and that's about it. Yeah. Um, Food-wise. Food-wise, the Germans kind of don't know what they're doing. It's ballpark food. But I mean, it's hot dogs and sauerkraut. We went to a Zagat, um, which the fireman I was at, the fireman I was with, um... Well, I said, oh, did you go, guys go to that Augustina restaurant at Zagat uh, Rated, and they changed the Z to an F and then called me that. <laughs> they said, oh, you, uh, you mean faggot rated? That's what they said. <laughs> Wei Song Xian. Yeah. And what, did, uh, what was the other joke you heard about the, when the guy said one of his relatives died oh, yeah, in yeah, Dachau? Yeah. yeah, well, we went to— we This went, is fireman th- this humor. This is fireman humor, and this is what, like, you know, this is how, like, people go to jail for this shit today. But I'll just tell you. It was, I, you know, it was a fun. It's because it's just a joke. It's just a funny. One joke. of the firemen. We went to Dachau concentration camp, which we'll talk about in a second. And then he said to me, the fireman, he, my boy Big T, he said to me, he said, um, he said, you know, my uncle, uh, my uncle died in the Holocaust. And I was like, like, and he said it sincerely. He was like, my uncle died in the Holocaust. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, man. And he was like, yeah, it goes, you know, he fell out of one of the guard towers, broke his neck. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a good joke. It's a good yeah. joke, which is probably like just a street joke that you know was passed around. Yeah, but it was good. It was good at the time. Here's the deal. Here's what it is. Chrissy, look, Chrissy's somewhat of like what would you say? Uh, trans, transsexual. F- besides being super trans, yeah, you're kind of like a G-list celebrity. You would say H F. I would say, let's be on in America. Yeah. Well, what are we talking about? Black neighborhoods and and Suffolk County, Long Island. <laughs> Because we're talking about predominantly black neighborhoods. You are A-list. And Suffolk County, Long Island. Yeah. I'm close. I'm uh, about A-B. Yeah, yo, that's him. That, yo, you saw guy called? Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm yo, not, Andrew Schultz, right? Yeah, they call me Andrew Schultz. But most other places, I would say an E. An okay. E to an F. You're an E to an F-list celebrity here, but it's enough to get a lot of puss. Plus, you're also a cute kid. So you got yeah. you got cute going for you, and you also got that you're on TV recognizable. So you get a lot of puss based on those things. Now we went to Bavaria, which is a German state. We're going to explain to you in a second what the difference between Bavaria, Prussia, Austria is. All German kids, all fumeless, but it's wild. And you went there, 
all the kids are tall. Hitler was, you got to give him one thing. He was right about one thing. Kill kids. Handsome kids. Ke so the I'll German say, kids were cute, cute good-looking guys. So everyone basically looked like you, but a little taller yeah. and not as blown out. Yeah. Yeah, butts were a little tighter. Butts were a little tighter, and yeah. And nobody gets guy code out there. Nobody gets guy code. Did you feel it? I felt it. Not one woman looked at me. Yeah. Not one. I felt like, I felt like Giannis walking through the streets of America. That's what it is. No, no. Giannis, no, that's exactly what it yeah, is. Nobody looked at me. Yeah. I mean zero. Yeah, zero to the point, and it was just, it was interesting because you kind of look like just someone they went to school with who put on a lot of weight. Who put on a lot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I looked like a failure. I mean, everybody out there was six three, six four, you know, one eighty, and I'm six one two thirty five. Yeah, and they all had blonde hair, fumeless. Yeah. And, uh, good looking people though, huh? Good looking people, and being a comedian out there, I don't think it carries the same gravitas or attraction they don't have that sort of kind of thing that That's, we have it's not a man to they them. just all love michael jackson apparently I, I was there with um with the firefighters in a bar one night where Giannis Giannis was home um googling nazi videos and and or it was in the hotel googling nazi stuff for the next day and for I sure the german government knew we were there they were watching us and tapped our phones yeah because we were googling a lot of nazi a videos. lot of nazi shit and then yeah and then Giannis was standing outside in public in the middle of a public square watching a nazi video from exactly where we were standing 60 years ago screaming this is where hitler stood <laughs> so i was like you gotta shut up just to give you a little context what we learned being over in bavaria is in germany in, in the country of Germany, it is violently illegal. Mm -hmm. I'm just using the word violent to emphasize how frowned upon it is. I mean, you do jail time. Three you, to five years if you put up a, if you hail. If you cannot hail, the, the, you, you cannot, uh, I think there's little loopholes for theater and things like that. But generally, you cannot hail Hitler. You cannot, you know, it's very sensitive to even say the word Nazi or Nazi jokes. You got to be careful yeah. out there. It's a whole fucking thing. You got to imagine we're in a place where, you know, we're talking 45. So you're talking about 80 years ago. It's, it's people gonna... are still alive who we walk past in the streets that were there for that time period. There's people still alive today who were in the same room as Hitler. Unbelievable. I mean, you know, my dad, my dad's 90. So my yeah. dad, if my dad, people my dad's age were like fully conscious Cognizant people. Yeah, your dad. Yeah. While this was going on, my dad yeah. was born in twenty eight or twenty nine. So yeah, he was sixteen, seventeen he was 16, years 17 old. Seventeen years old when this shit went down. So it's highly illegal to do anything like that. You do jail time. In fact, while we were there at Oktoberfest, which is a shit show yeah. of drinking, it's like an amusement park for beer. Yeah, it really is. To uh, what was a Swiss or Swedish? They were Switzerland. They were uh, Swiss. Swiss. Two Swiss. Like two Swiss tourists. You could probably Google it got arrested and uh, kicked out of the country for getting drunk and throwing up Nazi salutes at October. Yeah, you get deported if you're if you're not if you're a not a German citizen, you get deported, you can never come back to Germany. And if you are a German citizen, you get 3 to 5 years in jail. It's what it is. But here's the wild thing. We were doing this Nazi walking tour in Munich. Now, basically Munich is where the Nazi party started. It's where it started. Adolf Hitler was living there. He's from Austria right. originally. And then after World War One, he moved to Munich and kind of uh, tried to get into art school, failed. And then he started finding himself hanging out at, at beer halls, which is just German culture. Everything happens around beer and beer halls, which is these massive. You can Google photos of old beer halls. There's like thousands of people would get together and drink brews and listen to political speeches. And Adolf uh, was just he would crush. I mean, let's be honest. The kid was a headliner. Oh, Hitler? He was a Woo! headliner. One thing about Hitler and the Nazis, those motherfuckers sold tickets. They, I, well, he sold tickets. Yeah. So he, he's selling, Yeah, he sold tickets like he's the Andrew Schultz of... Of, uh, uh, of, of uh, Nazis, of yeah. Of Nazis, yeah. Yeah, Hitler. because he would crush. He yeah. would... Um, and he, he worked his way up to be the, like, the, um, the propaganda, the head of the propaganda, which back then, propaganda has a negative connotation now. Because of things like this, because of this time period, propaganda just meant like the guy who speaks, the guy who's, you know, d dealing with the public, you know. But now it's like propaganda means like you're a fucking liar, which is, is great because that's, that's basically what he was doing. That's what, yeah. But he was such a good speaker, they used him for that, and he realized his power, much like a Conor McGregor right. or a Donald Trump, and he wanted more. He's like, I want to be the head of the party, and they're like, get the fuck out of here. 
So he left the party for a little while. We're talking about this is in like the 30s now, the yeah. early 30s. And and, and 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 let me clarify: when he was the 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 you know the head propaganda guy, I mean, we're talking about because because a big thing with German politics is going into beer halls, like you know beer gardens, big beer halls. And that's where you do your politics. That's where you do your political rants. That's where people come and listen to you. Still to this day, they still do it in beer halls. It's a huge thing. Be- drinking beer is not it doesn't have a negative uh, spin on it like it does here. It's you people. It's like encouraged to drink beer. It's a part of the culture. So Hitler and and his crew were selling like. I'm talking about 10,000 seats. I mean, well, he, Hitler started to really push tickets. Yeah. People really were, And so then he's, he, he, he figured it out that he was the draw. He wanted more. They kicked him out. He quit the party because uh, he knew that if he left, that they would see the light, that without him, they yeah. were really nothing. And that's what happened. And they saw, like, wow, this kid's ambitious, and we don't really like this kid. He's fuck, you know. He's one of those guys you know you have in the yep. office who's really, a, really a go getter looking to get ahead. But we need him because he pushes tickets. He just pushes tickets, and when he left, no seats. And when he came back, it's sold out. Yeah, he was the star. Make no mistake, the Nazi Party, which back then was called just fucking you know the, peeps, uh, peep, the, the Democratic Socialists, working what they, party, working yeah. class socialists. What was it called again, Zach? It was I'm like just the na- Well, Nazis is an acronym for National National uh, Socialist just, Democrat Working Party. Yeah, I'm just blanking, but. He, uh, well, uh, it was really, it was really his personality. Yeah. Make no mistake, history a lot of times is just pushed forward by individually charismatic or brilliant people or capable people. He right. happened to be charismatic and evil. Yeah. But it was his personality that pushed this to the forefront. And a lot of people, you know, they can't imagine. I kept being fascinated by like how people could do that and like how it could happen and like you got to understand Germany. In this time, in the early 1930s, they had just been decimated in World War One. They got their whole country ruined and ripped apart. They had to pay major war reparations, major. And the the um, you know we had the Great Depression here uh, in 30. It was, what was the Great Depression? 1928. 29. 29. We had the Great Depression here in America, and everybody knows the stories. I mean, guys had to you know fathers had to knock out their teeth to sell their teeth and all this. But it was 20 times worse in Germany. I think they were saying at the height of it, it was like a 75 percent unemployment rate. In Germany, so it just was the perfect, perfect, perfect time for a guy like Hitler to step up and say, "Hey, Germany doesn't love you, but I do. Here's what we need to do: we need to just get our sense of national pride. The Jews and the non-Germans are the one, and the Romas, which are like um, Romani, like gypsies, yeah. Romani's, which are like I guess we call them gypsies in America. These are the people who caused it all, which of course was not true. But being a propaganda guy, he just needed someone to blame, and he got nearly the entire nation of Germany to hate these groups of people that had nothing to do with the situation, nothing to do with the reason why Germany was in the situation it was. It's interesting because you can clearly see, I mean, that's the reason why we study history is because hindsight's twenty twenty, as the old expression goes, and you can clearly see how this unfolded, and you can clearly see that it was a confluence of factors that came together, one big stew of situations, of context, that created... World War II created the Holocaust, created the Nazi Party into what it was. And like Chris said, one was the desperation of the German people. I mean, they were printing money like inflation. It was like the, their money was useless. It was like you could leave a barrel of money. It's an old German, old German story, adage, joke, whatever you want to call it from that time period where you could leave a barrel of money outside – Right, because it was so, they were printing so much money and it was so worthless at that point. They just kept printing more and more money, and inflation was so and so high that you could leave a barrel of money outside, and people would dump the money out and steal the barrel. Yep. At so, one point, at the worst it was, the guy tour guy told us one U.S. dollar equals one trillion German euros. Well, one trillion euros. It wasn't euros, but or it was francs, German francs, whatever, German whatever they're whatever called. Their what are they called was. again? They're called Heisenspieles. Hmm. The German Heisenstein. Yeah, you know what? Giannis had a good point too when we were out there. When we won World War II, what is it? 
The Mark. Marks. The Marks. That's right, German Marks. When we won World German War Marks. II and made all the changes. You mean when the boys won when World the War II? When the boys won World War II and we divided up Berlin and we, you know, you know, all put the Marshall Plan in effect for Japan, which, you know, brought baseball and all that shit. We should have outlawed the German language. Yeah. That was Giannis's point. It's just a gross language and it's got, it just makes you mad. Yeah. And it kind of fires you Wei up. Song it's got to go. It's got to go. Yeah, so this is a perfect confluence of circumstances, like I said. The desperation, the, you know, after World War II, the place is decimated. Their national pride is down. The rest of the world is kicking them. Treaty of Versailles, their fucking other countries are kicking them around, making them pay, being too harsh with them, taking land. You know, uh, Poland took some land. They all took some land where there was German people still living there, and they just took that land back. And uh, so Germans feeling beat down, and uh, per the stage is set Perfectly. Also, you have industrialization, uh, you know, is reaching a peak now. I mean, you could really, really make heavy artillery. I mean, sophisticated planes, bombs, all this stuff. And Germans, seems like they have a natural inclination for militarization, the Prussians, and also an aptitude for engineering. So these guys wanted to get to work building bombs. So this is coming. And then you also have the science around this time. Um, you know, people started to play with genes. The genome was discovered, and yeah. they started to manipulate genes. So, they, you know, the Nazis started to pervert this science. Like, hey, if you can manipulate a watermelon to make it bigger, you know, you can. why not manipulate people? You're manipulating animals, plants, crops. Yeah. Why not people? H yeah, Hitler's whole thing was, you know, to eliminate. He f felt like if you have people who he considered inferior, you know, the Jews, the Romanians, uh, any any non-German, Catholics even, gays, that you would pollute the gene pool, and he wanted a superhuman, and the superhuman had blonde hair and blue eyes, which is interesting because Hitler was just fucking short and had black hair I mean, that and kid, brown eyes. I mean, that, he was not a good-looking kid, and no. he definitely had fumes. He looked like a Croatian father. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what he looked like. Yeah. So that's the stage that was set. And, um, of course, also you got a Nietzsche was a big German philosopher right before that time. And he had the concept, of course, of the Uberman, the Superman. So all that shit Hitler took and it made it, you can clearly see all these factors come together in this one big shit stew sandwich. But most importantly... The kid was charismatic. Yeah. Even, I mean, you have to be an animal to agree with anything he says because it's fucking insane and sadistic and evil, just pure evil. But when you watch his speeches, the kid spoke with emotion. The kid went 110% yeah. every time he hit that stage. He was crazy. The kid stepped up to the mic. I mean, that's really what it was. And he wasn't just a good speaker. I mean, he was... The, he, he was the guy making decisions. Oh, yeah. He was running the Reich. He ran the Reich. And, you know, the war ended in 1945 when, you know, the Russians surrounded uh, Berlin and then Hitler killed himself. Um, but really, about two years before that, the general, his own generals were like, we need to, we're going to lose. We're going to lose this war. But he said, no, we're going to fight till, we're going to fight to the end. He started arming women and children at the very end. Yeah. Um, and it was just complete complete i mean the definition of an egomaniac is adolf hitler you can't be more egotistical than him and here's some things you look back in history you know a lot of historians have joked around calling him the forrest gump of history because there's just a few moments where he got so lucky so lucky i mean it could have went the other way what so about when we saw the place that we saw where he had spoke every one day a week would say it was wednesday every wednesday for like a year he spoke for up to three hours let's just take a second and 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 emphasize that the guy would hold people's attention for three hours. We perform in front of crowds for a living. 45, 50 minutes, even if you're crushing doing comedy, people are kind of that. They're starting to get to the end. Right. They're like, all right, you know, an hour, maybe an hour and a half tops. This kid would talk politics and crush for three hours. That's how good he was of a speaker. So like Chris said, he would do these for three hours. And? Three hours. And then one day, a guy, I'm forgetting his name, which is great. Forgetting his name. Hold up. We can pull that up. Can you look up the guy who um, tried to assassinate, tried to assassinate, Adolf, assassinate Adolf Hitler in Munich? In Munich, he tried. Um, this was before, like, the Nazi party was as, you know, as big as it would become. It was like in the late 30s, I believe. Um, and he had the timer on the bomb go off 48, 40, uh, no, he wanted no, no, to. No, no, Hitler left. 
Hitler, Hitler left after 48 minutes that day, and then the which bomb was went so off. rare. So I mean, it would never happen. Never happened. Just and the that bomb day, went left. off about 10 minutes later. Yeah, and he. What was the reason he left again? Was it the the weather or something? He had yeah, to travel. He had to take the train home. Yeah, because he used to take the train to fucking just rallies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, Munich. Look, what was his name? There were uh, two people who tried to assassinate him in Munich. Uh, one was Maurice Bavard, and the other one was Johann George. As Elsa. Johann George is who it was. Uh, uh, neither one of those sound correct. I think it was Joy because I knew it was going to be with a J. Well, can you see? Uh, can, can you say a, ti- a time bomb that Elsa constructed and placed near the speaking? His name's Elsa. His name is uh, that's J- his name. Johann George uh, George Elsa. Yeah, Elsa. That's his name. Yeah. Hitler, who left earlier than expected, but killed eight people and injured over sixty-two others. Yeah, and then they caught the fucking guy too, and they yeah. caught the guy. Bad luck, the re- the way they caught him. And then guess what? And then they kept him he alive. He almost got away from it. They but kept- then they kept him alive for a while. Yeah, they probably for tortured while. his ass. And then five he- years. Five years, and then he was in the concentration camps. They put him in a camp. In Dachau, right? In da- I believe it was Dachau. Yeah, Dachau. But they kept him alive because, I guess, I don't. there was a specific reason why Hitler wanted him alive. But then when Hitler felt the walls closing in, and they he ordered him to be, like, it was like Hitler had... A thousand things on his mind. Like, Hitler had, like, countries surrounding him, but he still made the order to kill that guy. Yeah. He never forgot he had to kill him. Yeah. So that was wild. We actually, listen, going to Munich, and we were actually there while they were having their election, so it was a little weird because we were in, what's it called, the Marienplatz? What was that? Marienplatz. The Marienplatz, and that's where the Beer Hall push happened, right? Right there, yeah. So when you go to Munich... You're basically going to ground zero of where the Nazi party formed, started. Right. It was Hitler's town where he was making his bones struggling as an artist. And then he started talking in these beer holes, joined the Nazi party, r- you know, rose up through the Nazi party just because of his ability to speak. And so you're there. You're walking in the streets that he walked. Now, f- I think it's like 40. How much percent of Munich was bombed to shit? It was like... I think it was, like, in the high 40s. High 40s. Like, uh, Munich was bombed. I mean, a lot of Germany got fucking drilled. Yeah, because basically, as we know, the U.S. Go. The USA was not getting involved in Europe's war. We just wouldn't do it. The war started in 38. or I'm sorry, 39. We didn't show up till 41 because we just said, look, we're not going to go. The U.S. people said we're not going to go. And then we start to find out about what's happening to Jews. And then we said, look, look, Adolf, all you got to do is not push Jews in ovens, and your towns will be safe. You can do whatever you want. You can fight. You take, But just don't push people in ovens. And they couldn't do it. And then when you... Listen, what what happened... Here's how, here's how it works. This is how the red, white, and blue deals with this you. This is how the United States works in wartime. We give you a command, and we say, you have one chance to obey it. When you come back and say you're not obeying that command, we pick up the phone and we make one call, and it's to the boys. The boys! We call the boys, and then the entire U.S. Army comes down, parachuting onto your fucking country, and we destroy everything you ever fucking knew, and it fucking hurts bad. And then when you fucking come, when you come out on the other end, when you come out on the other end, you just know who did this to you, and it's the boys. Look, I know you're watching us over there right now. You're watching all these people who are banging on the door of the Supreme Court. They got short haircuts, little purple hair strands and glasses, and they're screaming and crying to the sky. Yeah, that's here. But guess what? That's here during peacetime. Right now we're in peacetime. We're American. This is a free country. So everyone's arguing politics. But make no mistake. Yeah. Make no mistake. Yeah. One of you motherfuckers steps out of line and starts pushing people into ovens or doing something crazy. The boys are going to show up on your doorstep and clean the place out. Yeah. It's if you are European And I don't mean the boys who you're seeing on TV processes. I'm talking about... The boys. Yeah, and here's here's how wars usually. Here's what's been. Here's what happened in the first world war and the second world war. Countries start to push Poland around. Yeah, that's just you just start to start there, around right? Poland. Yeah, yeah, you just start to throw around Poland. Poland's just sitting there with yeah. its kawumpkis going like, no, nah, you know, da da. You know. Yeah, they just don't know. They're like, Chesh. Yeah, because Lukash just wants to make. He just wants to make fucking potato croquet. That's all he wants to do. And yeah, and see that dude, my great friend Lukash, love and death. His face, if you want to look, his face looks like a pierogi came to life. If you want to see what <laughs> you want to pour applesauce on his face, you want to see what people from 1945 look like. <laughs> go to at Lucas I 
tag him on Instagram, <laughs> and you'll just see. Yeah. yeah. Greatest guy. He's a doctor, Great. but and he's and a he's handsome kid's godfather, and he's a handsome kid. He's a cute kid, but make no mistake, he looks like history. He's has he's got a historical look. Cause I mean his genes have been in Poland and stayed in Poland. He is a Polish kid. But, <laughs> yeah, but let me tell you something. He's got a fucking gorgeous wife, and before he had his wife, he banged out a lot of hot girls. And does he have a nice piece? He's got a nice big dick that was freshly <laughs> circumcised. <laughs> Oh, he got it circumcised late? I don't know. No. But you used to see him in the locker room because he played ball with yeah, you. Yeah, he was a big dick. What was his piece like? He had a nice fucking Polish piece. piece. He had a nice fucking Polish piece. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Way so, song she ain't. So the thing is, you start pushing Poland around. That's when you know. And a little, there's just been a little concern from some countries as of late pushing Poland around. One of them being Germany. And the thing I want to remind you of is if you want to push Poland, someone around then why don't you try on the boys the boys why don't you see if you can come push the boys around because i got news for you you can't push around the boys because guess what the boys we all do keto we all do crossfit yeah it's not the people you see on the tv at the protests that are coming no no, no, no. our boys are still here no i got a news i got our boys are still here here's the thing and i know you know unfortunately it just may hurt some feelings I got a news for you. A lot of the boys are pro Kavanaugh. It's just what it is. <laughs> a lot of the boys, they're going to protect you, and yeah. they fucking, it's what it's, it is. Yeah. So. And listen, listen to me. Those who, that's who you want protecting you. Yeah, you want a pro. Yeah. Because here's the thing. You don't want Hari Kondabolo picking up a fucking gun nah. to go defend you. Here's nah. the thing. Guys like Giannis and I, well, maybe mostly Giannis, we're the generals. You know, we tell people what to do. Because the front line of the boys, we're keto, we do CrossFit, yeah. you know, we're fucking jacked out kids, we're, we're juiced up, we're on steroids, we're, you know, we got... We, we got, vote Republican. We vote Republican, <laughs> I was going to say, we, 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 we lean a little right. Yeah, we're, we're from know. Long Island and the rest of the country. Yeah, we love Trump. You we're know? not from three places. We're not from Portland, we're not from San Francisco, and we're not from New York City. That's it. We are from every single other place on this goddamn planet. It's just what it is. Yeah. So, and we're heavy. What? Beef fed. Yeah. Boys. Boys, yeah. There's and no everyone's packed. Everyone's no. strapped out and ready to go. Underestimate us, Russia. Uh, just underestimate. China, just keep looking at us funny. The, boy, the boys are just taking a nap, cuz. Cuz, yeah. You don't want to wake up the boys. Japan woke up the boys with Pearl Harbor, and then what happened? They got fucked up. Because you don't want to wake up the boys, so that's what you shouldn't do. Our tour guide was great. Wasn't he? Remember, he was like, "Listen, when you so they bombed, when you bomb, you have to expect to get bombed back." <laughs> yes, because that's what the boys did. That's we bombed you back. Yeah, Munich got fucking destroyed. Dresden, oh, Dresden my got firebombed. God. More people died in Dresden. More civilians died in Dresden than uh, you know Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That can't be true. It is true. You can Google look it up, that. Zach. That, I, we you said that the other day. Firebomb Dresden. Yeah, and we only did that really to, for it was power show to the Russians. We did that. Yeah. That had no political or strategic. Well, a lot advance. of that we, stuff we just knew. We that. just want because we knew the fight with Russia was it was coming, right? Well, it was interesting because we were all on the same side, but within that war effort on the same side, we were competing. You know, the Russians, Stalin wanted to get to Berlin first. The Americans wanted to get there first. We wanted to bomb them harder. They Stalin wanted to bomb got us there first. Unfortunately, kind of did. What it is? No, not he did. He did. We we knew. We knew we both both sides knew that what was coming next because we're, we're opposing economic yeah. philosophies, opposing systems. We knew that the next that we were on the same side for this. You know, we're gonna get together to take care of this little fucking man with the mustache. Yeah, and then it's gonna be all out war, a yeah. uh, cold war between us. Now the thing is, we was I right about that? Uh, so 80,000 people died in uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That's the numbers I'm getting, and there's no accurate numbers on uh, Dresden, but it's believed to be between 35,000 and 135,000. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah. Just killed everybody there. Yeah, they just fucking firebombed it, dude. They it's blasted it. And it, the problem, there was really no military targets like, there. Like, they didn't even know it was coming, probably. No, it, no military targets there, no, nothing at all. They just kind of bombed people. They just wanted to show Russia, yeah. The thing about Germany. It's fucked up. There's a lot, look. Nazis were evil, but like when you war is evil. War is evil, but the Nazis were evil, and you understand that a lot of people just got swept up in it. You couldn't really. It got so big, everyone's scared. Everyone has to join the effort. Um, and then when it was over, 
There was a no. What the thing that nobody really talks about the way like nobody talks about how doctors want boats and that's why the healthcare system's fucked up. Right. Well, that of World War II is the atrocities committed against the Germans towards the end and after the war. Yeah. The Germans got fucking brutalized. Yeah. The Germans and all those the German populations, the German speaking people who lived in parts of Czechoslovakia, Poland, you know, because that's how it is. They got cleansed. Yeah. They got ethnically cleansed. A lot of them fled. There was tons of refugees from all over Europe who were German speaking who had to rush back to Germany. But remember, they're rushing back to a country that is occupied by angry Russians mostly. Yeah, who've the lost- US kind of left. Yeah, but we did some shit too. Yeah. But you gotta think the Russians were pissed because the Russians lost twenty million people in this fucking war because of the Germans. So they raped a few women named Yana. It's just what happened. It's what happened. Yeah, and it's, it's just, bad. You couldn't get. You can't. You know, it would. There got, was a lot of rape that happened of German people. A lot people. of innocent German people. A lot of because, innocent. Because the thing is, and I, and I and I say innocent, and I'm careful to say that word, but but I'm backing it up with the fact that you know what we learned is that you didn't have a choice in Germany, okay? So what I mean by that is here you have a choice. You can like Trump, not like Trump, like Hillary, not like Hillary, whatever you want. In Germany during that time, either, bless you, either you were a Nazi supporter and, and hailed, or you and your family were killed and or thrown in a concentration camp. You had one of two options. Yeah. Either join the Nazis and salute to us, or be killed on the spot, or go to a concentration camp and have your family murdered, yeah. and raped and killed and whatever. So, so that's what it is. So a lot of these people were innocent, like you said, just being swept up, where they just w- were born and raised in Germany, but they were anti-Hitler. They did not like him or like what any of these Nazis stood for, but they were fucking killed later, and it's just what, I mean, it just happens. We went to Dachau, too. I mean, like I said, oh we God, did Dachau. so much touring. And, and you then, hated the tour because he was, you hated the tour guide because he was Chinese. Well, you know, the weather was a little chilly. Yeah. Because I go the other way. I like it warm. Yeah. And so when the, when the, when the temperature drops below 62, the Chinese are not safe. Yeah. 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 Giannis no. did not like the Chinese. Giannis, the Chinese tour guide spoke English with a Chinese accent, and then Giannis said in the middle of the tour, when is this guy going to start speaking English? I did not say that. Oh, did I say that? Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no what happened was, is it wasn't, his English was actually pretty good. No, he was great. He's he was actually a good guy. tour guide. He just, like no, him. he was not that great a tour the, guide. Uh, the tour guide for the Hitler walking tour in the Third Reich was a great tour the guide. The one who said you could call him Mein Fuhrer? Yeah, yeah. Because actually Mein Fuhrer, the originally, just like propaganda, originally Mein Fuhrer just kind of meant like my leader, right? But now it's, of course, turned into something different, just like the name Adolf. Nobody names their you, kids Adolf you anymore. You can't do it anymore. Yeah, no, there's no Hitlers anymore. Everyone's changed their name, although from what we understand, Adolf and the last name Hitler was just a common name back then that now it, you just can't it name it. was just like John or something. Yeah. And propaganda just meant like, hey, you're the speaker. You're the guy who deals with the public. Now, obviously because of the Nazis, it's turned into, uh, you know, you're fucking propaganda. You're lying. It's It's... Public relations, that's false. That's a lie. That's manipulated. And in that same way, you know, what were we yeah. just talking about originally? We were talking, we were on Dachau. Dachau. Yeah. So we went to Dachau. Oh, we were talking about the tour guide. He was just a little all over the place. Right. Right. And, and yeah, mind Fuhrer just means my leader. Wei Song Xi So the guy was just a little all over the place. Um, his, his tour wasn't that tight. You know, we went on so many tours, I started to, like, really rate the tour guides. Yeah. And I would, put the tours together, by the way. Cause Do I get a fucking congrat, like, a good job or something? You're just so good at it. Yeah. You're so good at planning how we're going to see the see, fucking here's city. here's the thing, and Giannis, you mentioned this, too. When we were sitting in Mind Plots on the last day... You know, Jan, we had a flight to catch in about an hour and a half. But do you I, think the German company, the German government, was a, alerted to us being there because they were like, "Why are these two guys bopping around, yeah. going to every single tour this city has to offer? <laughs> yes. Who are these fucking kids?" We just kept going on tours, but like, yeah, you know, uh, you know, me having my German roots and Giannis being a Greek kid, you know, Giannis just wants to like look at sculptures and you know he's just looking around, taking his time. He's always late for things. And I'm just more anal with it because the German. So, like, I kind of, after being four or five days and being almost late for everything, the last day I kind of, and Giannis mentioned this, I kind of was like, you know what? 
Maybe I just want to fucking. Maybe I just want to see what happens yeah. when I turn the temperature up a little That's, bit. <laughs> maybe I just want to fry them. That's what happened. That's just, it. Yeah. Let me let me just let me just see if I could just put some panko and breadcrumb on them. Let me just throw them in the oven. Yeah. That's, let me just see. <laughs> we figured it out. We figured yeah. out what's behind the German personality yeah. of the 1930s and 40s yeah. that led to Nazism, yeah. fascism, by our relations. Because yeah, I was a little late. Chris is really organized with the tour. He's yeah. like, we, we saw, uh, he, when we would go to sleep, we were sleeping, basically we were sleeping in a hostel with these we, firemen. We slept, we literally had, to, I'm a grown man with a family, Giannis is 43 years old, about to get married, and we slept in twin beds. Two twin beds. We did. So yeah. Chris is like, and Giannis oh. didn't have a phone charger the whole trip. I know, well, I got fucked. At you, the, got, you did get fucked. She gave me the one for England. Fuck, bitch. Anyway, so Chris is just always the one like, okay, so, so we're going to sleep at uh, uh, th 1,300 hours to be up at 7.15 a.m. because we have to go to the tour for the, for the Hitler's youth. <laughs> when he was a young child in Munich, we're going to wake up. Then he wakes up, he fucking sounds an alarm, and we're going. And I'm a Greek kid. We go, hey, listen, baby, come on. It's like having a cup of coffee, drink is hanging out. We're just taking our time here, baby. We're relaxed. We're relaxed, philosophical people. And he's going, we have to make the tour. Come on, I should source it. <laughs> and so the battle between this went on for days until about the, t the fourth day. Chris just kind of was running out of patience. Yeah. And that's when he slowly just, that's how Nazis are. They just kind of like, <laughs> yeah. your efficiency gets challenged. And you just, by the fourth yeah. day, you're just going, ice, and it just comes out. Yeah. So, 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 so. Yeah, because Giannis kept, yeah, he, for some reason, Giannis just kept looking the wrong way. Even though the cars come the same way as the U.S., I don't even think you noticed it. You just kept thinking we're in England. You were looking the wrong way. And we were crossing the street once, walking back to the hotel. And I said, let him just look the other way. And I wouldn't tell him a car's coming. You were going to push. Me, weren't you? Yeah, I was just gonna give a little push and then say, I don't know. That's not what happens. I just, I he then walked into the Stufenstreifen Street. When I was in college, it was just for uh, you know, um, Indiana Jones. The Nazis in Indiana Jones are always funny because they always smoke between these two hand, the, the ring finger and the middle finger. For some reason, when Germans smoke, they smoke like it's a camel, That's funny. like a camel's hoof. Yeah. And our tour guide was smoking between those two fingers was for he? some reason. Yeah, that was know. the best tour guide I've ever seen. It was, but. He's I always, a gay guy. For I always sure. used to just reenact like a Nazi getting somebody in the train, being like, Oh, hello, Dr. Johns. Says here you're going to Switzerland. Let me see your papers. Hmm, Switzerland. I don't think so. <laughs> Hands up. Because <laughs> Germans are fucking funny. We're funny fucking kids. I mean, we don't have a sense of humor you're or comedy club. You're all gay. You're like, it's like a gayness to Germans. Don't you think? Like, hello, my name is Horsenfusen. Would you like strudel? It's, it, it's like a gay. <laughs> yes, come to my place. Restaurants yes. here. Well, my place. Well, our characters, um, uh, what's uh, the character? St uh, Max and St Stubens. Max and Stubens, yeah. our characters that we put on Instagram that we that uh, Giannis developed in uh, Austria and Germany. Obsessed with black guys. They're gay, they're gay characters. Gay characters who are obsessed with black guys. American Wait, black guys. Those like, are the best kind. I like the black guys. Stubbins, uh, he loves the blocks. <laughs> he loves. <laughs> <laughs> but Joe, we were in Munich, cause and there's this place. We'll put up the. We will put up the pictures. Is it called the Marienplatz? Marienplatz. So I took a picture. First of all, it's intact. So, and it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And by the way, we decided that we're gonna do a full Patreon episode. Yes. In total flamboyant gay voice. So if you want to hear the episode where we just talk like this for the whole time, go to patreon.com slash Bayridge Boys. Yes, we haven't put it up yet, but in addition to our walk and talks, another segment we're going to do is we're, we're also, we're, we always do our bonus episode, okay? There's always a bonus podcast every week. If you join patreon.com slash Bayridge Boys and become a member of our matriarchy, you will get an extra episode every week, okay? But also, we do walk and talks now, yes. where we, me and Chris just walk, and then the third thing we're gonna do is fucking full little segments in gay voice yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's gonna be fun yeah so um what were you saying Marion i was Plots? saying Marion plots we took some pictures where there's pictures that exist during the beer hall putsch ceremonies that the nazis would had because make no mistake what happened was Hitler gave a speech. It's called the Beer Hall Putsch. It was like the martyrdom event for the Nazi party. Right. Where the 16 Nazis got killed by uh, Bavarian government soldiers. And so once the Nazis came to power, 
they would do a ceremony where they reenacted the walk from the beer hall to the government building to try to take over the government where they had this clash. And it all happened, right? Is that called the Marion Plots? Where you know what I'm talking about? Where, where, where we Marian went back Pl- in the morning? That's not Marion Plots. What is that? I don't. I forgot what that's called. I forget what it's called. But it's too. got two lions with ball with the actual sculpted balls in the yeah. back. Whoever's a history buff, whatever, just fucking post what it is, and we'll correct it next podcast. Whatever it's called. Wherever the beer hall push was. Wherever that happened, and then where the ceremonies and the reefs would go up on that statue with the two fuck. It has two lions, and Hitler would speak there. And so you can go there now. And there's actually a famous picture in front of that where Hitler was listening to uh, Nazi speeches when he was young, before he joined the party. And you can see he's like a 20-something-year-old kid, and he's in the crowd. And it's a famous picture you can Google where you see a young Hitler with his little stash. I don't even think he's cut it all the way to the middle yet. He's still, it still looks like a little longer. He hasn't become Hitler yet. But you can see he's blown up. They blow him up, and it's clearly Hitler in the audience of that speech. You can go, and we went to the spot where he was standing, like right there, yeah. and where these ceremonies would happen, where the Nazis would give their speeches. And then you look at the old footage, and you look at and you and you look at it in person. It's a little spooky and eerie because it looks the same. All the buildings are the same, and you realize, holy shit, this happened right here, right here, right here. And then one of the pictures that we took of me, I'm standing almost exactly where he was standing. Oh, it's exactly where he was standing, which is fucking wild. You can stand where he was standing and just feel all that evil. I felt the same way in Charleston. It's been a wild two weeks for me because back to back weekends, I went to Charleston, South Carolina. Where, make no mistake, the first shots of the Civil War were fired at Fort Sumner, you know? Hmm. And that's where that started. And that was evil and about evil in the slavery in America. And then, I guess through coincidence, or maybe simulators are having fun. Maybe the simulators are really fans of this podcast. Yeah. And they just set it up. Because then the next weekend, I'm in Munich. Yeah. Where the Nazis started. Yeah. So it's like the two most, like, horrific, organized you know, evil things by kind of Western powers. Yeah. With with industry behind them. Yeah. I was at the I went to the two cities where they both began in the you same keep week. Going where the enemy is. Where am I gonna go next? Where fucking Boston Red Sox. Yeah. That's the enemy. Yeah. Next yeah. week I'm going to fucking yeah, I'm going to Big Poppy's house. Yeah. Where that started. Cause the trip to Germany, I mean it was enlightening, and we didn't even fucking talk about Salzburg yet. And we didn't even talk about the fact that we were in Bavaria and we before we went there, we didn't even know what the fucking difference was. Yeah, the difference between Bavaria, Germany, and um, Austria, it's just, it doesn't make sense. They're all like German states, right? So all the people are like ethnically German, descendants of the Celts, you know, uh, Germanic tribes who settled there. But they fucking hate each other, uh, and they actually had a war with each other. The, uh, but Bavaria is not separate. Bavaria is just a part of Germany. Yeah, now. but it used to. I mean, they used to fight. They, they still say Bavarian. Yeah, they, well, they, they kind of, the Prussians who are a little up north and are known to be, they, when you think about the German stereotypes, the Prussians are like the militaristic Germans, like right. the Nazis. That's what you think of. Or the Wilhelms, you know, with the Wilhelm uh, with, spiked with the spiked helmet and the fucking, I'm a German, let's go. And then the Bavarians... Your stereotype would be the leader hose and a big mug of beer. Bavarian, we were told Bavarian and Munich and Oktoberfest and, and the whole state of Bavaria, which is just now part of uh, Germany, is like Texas. Yeah, it's, it's like, like the, the Texas South, of Germany. Like, Woo-wee, cowboy shit. Yeah, they look at them like that, a lot more laid back with the leader hose and like the Prussians up north. And the Prussians are a little more up north, I guess. They don't really fucking, uh, or is it east? Or, I don't know where they are. But the Prussians look at the leader hose and as like silly. Right, you know? and then you got your Austrians, which is another country, but they're German too, and but they hate to be confused with German, yeah, which but is they hilarious. Speak the same language, they like, look the same. Yeah, when you're American, you go and you go like, you guys are all fucking snow monkeys. You and know? we also we just randomly took a day trip. We just decided last minute to take a day trip to Salzburg, Austria, wow. on the train, which is where Mozart, the great composer Mozart, was born and raised. And cousins, cousins, and cousettes, if you ever get a chance, I know a lot of. A lot of you guys have probably been there already, but if you ever get a chance, go to Salzburg. I mean, Giannis is going <gasps> to, sorry, Giannis is going to fucking detour his honeymoon through Salzburg. I tried, but my fiance was like, no, we're going to Italy and Greece. So she wants no part of it. What about my, mine and your fiance? Yeah. Yeah. Wh- well, she doesn't know that you're just coming with us on the honeymoon. Yeah. She's going to open up her suitcase and I'm going to say, hi, Brittany. <laughs> but look, Salzburg 
It's got to be one of the most underrated, beautiful tourist destinations. It was so underrated and so beautiful. Oh, it's God. like the fucking Bay Ridge of the world. Yeah. Because Bay Ridge is underrated and beautiful. Well, I mean, so they have the oldest medieval and biggest and well-kept medieval castle in Europe, yeah. in Salzburg. Salzburg and it's Fortress. On like, it's on the, the biggest hill in Salzburg, and it God, overlooks the whole city, and it also faces the Alps. And they have like restaurants there where you can just sit up on this mountain and stare at the Alps. It was cute. It was seriously fucking gorgeous. Yeah. That was literally like, it's a time I think I'll always remember in my life. Yeah, and uh, I had to smoke a cigarette. You smoked a few. <laughs> <laughs> Way song she ain't. Yeah. And it's just what it is. I mean, it was just so f beautiful. I mean, we were sitting up there and it happened to be a great day. And um, we checked out all of Salzburg. We walked around. Salzburg, we were there mostly for the beauty. It was just, there was nothing really, we didn't even really pay attention too much to the history uh, in Salzburg. Well, we, we did. No, we looked at all those buildings that were built in 1280, 1320, and then restored in 1984. I'm just saying we didn't learn that much about we the didn't specifics. Learn about, well, we were uh, caught up in the goddamn beauty because we sat in that restaurant for four hours and drank bros. Drank bros. Well, we learned. I mean, we learned a little bit about like you know the kings. Yeah, I guess we didn't learn. I guess as there much. was a bishop that like, back then, like the bishops and the aristocracy used to live in those castles. And they would just shit on everyone below them. That's basically what it, what and it is. Shit on my on my family. I mean, let's think. I mean, the crazy thing about going to Germany with you was we went right after you confirmed that you're mostly German. And I'm mostly German. So make but it, not upper echelon high class German. I mean, of course you wouldn't be. You'd be at a party with donkey heads if I'm, that was the case. I'm frontline German. You are shit shoveler peasant yeah. German. Yeah. You're down. Your 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 line. Your family line is down there at the bottom of that hill. At the bottom of that hill, shoveling yeah. shit. You're lifting rocks. You're moving boulders. Because you think in the 40s, if I was alive in the 40s and of age, you think the Nazis would have made fun of my butt a little bit? For sure. Yeah. Here's the thing. Like, we're all animals, so we all adapt to our environment. Like, that's why you hate the heat and stuff, because you're from Germany. Yeah. So the heat makes Chinese people unsafe. Yeah. But also, when you look at the size of your butt, it means for generations— your people were lifting something for bishops. Yeah. So, because to have that, and I butt, have no biceps either. No biceps. So it wasn't this. You were. It was you carrying things on your back. So that's why you have a strong butt and and <laughs> pushing up. That's why I have good tries. You have good tries because you're pushing something up hills. Yeah. You could have been carrying like, you could have been like a plumber. Your line could have been famous plumbers who are carrying up parts for the shit for the yeah for, for the. <laughs> <laughs> for the yeah. toilets of the bishops. What do you think my bit? What do you think my real last name is? It's Heitenstufer. It's got to be something. Yeah, like uh, what's that place in Ridgewood called? I love that. Zoomstomptish. Zoomstomptish. That's what. Well, my ma the main name is Kerner. Kerner. It could be Kerner. You could just be a regular Kerner. What does Kerner mean? Can we look up in German what Kerner means? Because sometimes the last names are based on what the trade that his trash monkey ancestors had. K -O -E -R -N -E -R. Make no mistake. K o e r n e r. You get that? One more time. K o e. R N E R. Yeah. Kerner. Yeah. yeah, is what what kind of what does that mean something in German? Like a blacksmith or like prostitute? Yeah, does it mean does it mean guy who carries boulder with big butt? Because you inherited that big butt from one of your ancestors. It's just what it is, right? So I'm telling you, it's, it's an occupational name for a grain merchant or possibly for the administrator of a granary. Wow. wow. The administrator of a greenery? Granary, granary, yeah. What does that mean? Wow. Middle High German corner nickname for a miller from a noun derivative of Middle High German current. Yeah, so it's an occupational name for a grain merchant or someone higher in that field. So like I was an selling grain. Because you were a grain merchant. Merchant, you know what that means? Selling it. No, you know what that means if you were a merchant? What? Jew. Yeah. You, were, you got Jew in you. Well, I told you I had a little Jew in you me. You do, yeah. Because Well, you said it be in the, because you're one of the brightest not bright kids I know. Yeah. So you said you thought you were Jew because, uh, the, because the Jews believe in part of the Bible. So that makes you part Jewish, which part it Jew doesn't. Yeah. Well, and Catholicism started out as a, as a kind of out, you know, fringe sect of Judaism. Yeah. 
So that's where the Catholics came out of. Yeah, you're not supposed to be outside. They should give Kinda you like- an ankle bracelet that keeps you in Ridgewood, that goes off whenever you leave Ridgewood. Whatever. You're not <laughs> supposed to be walking these streets, cut. You're not supposed to cross that fucking water. Yeah. You're supposed to. They should give you, you know, people are in house arrest. <laughs> yeah. People from Ridgewood should have to wear that around their ankles. Yeah. So the rest of the world knows when they try to leave. Yeah, and but Eileen you- can't leave Ridgewood. No, you guys can't. We can't have you people fucking walking these Yo, streets. Is the is my mom and Eileen having a brew right now? Cause right now, since you got new furniture and you got your place, right now the corner store that sells brews, yeah, <laughs> his business is a little lower. Yeah, because make no mistake, as soon as you make another bad decision, which and will I, happen, yeah, and Eileen and Lynn are going to get a brew to smoke, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and maybe maybe a sausage at Doom Stomp Dish. At Doom Stomp Dish. So, yo, yeah. make no mistake. We were in the place where your DNA line comes from. You didn't feel anything. I did. You yeah. were look because I was looking at the people, knowing you being your friend. I was looking at the people, and it's wild that you can see, you can see. It's kind of like you guys got the same face. Yeah. It looked like a lot of yous, just better versions. Just better versions, yeah. better shape. I mean, I, I got no, I got no interest from females or males. Um, and uh, yeah, it was interesting. It, it, it the, the, the beauty of Austria. It really like shook me. It like made me nervous. I, I wanted to leave. Yeah. Because it was so nice. So I was like, I don't. It's I'm not powerful. worthy of being. Yeah. And the churches were beautiful. And you yeah. were cursing in the churches. I did. You got you very uncomfortable. in the church. You got very uncomfortable yeah, with that. You, yeah. You were. You thought we were going to hell, but yeah. I, I tried to tell you it's just a building, and I don't believe in this. Yeah. And you were making fucking jokes about you know like real bad stuff in the church. Yeah. Bad stuff that they did. Yeah. That they did. So yeah. I don't want to hear it. I know I saw when I posted that video on Instagram, we lost like maybe two or three followers. I get it. I knew it was going to happen because there's a couple of you are hardcore Catholics, and that's fine. I'm not judging you. But make no mistake, you got some freaky-ass priests in there. In there. <laughs> you know what you're talking about, those freaky-ass priests touching those kids. That yeah. shit happened. That, yeah. yeah. Act like that shit didn't happen. That shit happened. That shit happened. So, so yeah. So, make no mistake, you're from there. I am from there. I mean, it was a fucking trip of a lifetime, though. I mean, it really was just dope to be in Germany. But I, I will say that, the, you know, it makes you appreciate America a lot more. Because after about the third day, I was just ready to get back to the United States where, like, you can just get, like, we looked, we walked around for 20 minutes to get soap on a Tuesday afternoon. Because I'm so glad we went on this trip for one reason, specifically, uh, many reasons, but the a big reason was there's been a huge change in you. Yeah. Now, when we left ISIS, Chris was like, you know what? I love Germany. I can't wait to get to my homeland. Yeah. He said, I'm going to come back with some different opinions. Yeah. But you know what happened is it went the opposite way, and you yeah. learned that you are a red, white, and blue kid through and through. I'm a fucking patriot, and I hate the Keep Nazis. Keep talking. I got to put money in the thing because I'm going to get banged out. And especially going to see Dachau at the end of the concentration camp to see the, the, the ovens and the gas chamber and the killing fields and what they fucking did to those people. It's just gross. At, at what point did the sweets come out? The sweets came out immediately. I got we had a layover in Iceland. It was pretty crazy to see. Yeah, yeah, we had a layover in Iceland, and I had an Icelandic chocolate bar, and then it just the wheels came off for six days. The funny thing is, is we say this, and people probably think it's like, oh, that's cute, that's funny. They're probably exaggerating. Let me be clear: you have never seen anything like this in your life. Okay, we're talking about. I, I don't know anyone who does the things that he does, like comes back to the room at 2 in the morning with chocolate uh, graham crackers. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a bag he just of- had a bag of chocolate graham crackers. When we eat, he at one point he had a milkshake and a piece of cake. Yeah. I mean, he doubles up. I'm- no, but I did ask for an iced coffee in Austria, and she came back with a coffee milkshake. But you did eat the whole fucking thing and drink the whole thing, and then when we were walking, you said, I can't feel my foot. <laughs> I got to chill out, no? Yeah, I mean, it's you and then the people who follow us on Instagram, which if you don't, you should, at History Hyenas. Chrissy went and met all the firemen down at Oktoberfest, and then he just made a video because you got a chocolate <laughs> banana. Yeah. Who, who gets drunk and then goes and gets a chocolate banana? Yeah. And what else? You got two sweets. 
I got a chocolate banana and an apple strudel. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me see if I can find it. Keep talking. Hold on. I'll, fi I'll find it and I'll play it yeah, right now. Yeah, he got an apple strudel and a chocolate banana. And then that night is the night he came back with chocolate-covered graham crackers. Yeah. So I, what I'm trying to say is it's not an exaggeration. He has a bad addiction to sweets, and he has fallen off the wagon. I mean, the wagon is in a ditch and needs to be reconstructed by a carpenter, and Chrissy is caught in a mud slide quick sand on the side of the road the wheels have fallen, fallen off. off yeah i don't know where that video is it's fucking gone i didn't save it yeah but if you follow us on instagram you you saw that that um he made that video because we just had a few too many fucking brews we actually did i mean the, i had a lot of because how much did you did the fire guys drink the firemen drank to a point where i'm being honest i don't know how i thought for sure we went out with 10 Ten guys out there, I thought for sure we were going to lose two. I thought two were going to either die or just say, I can't get on this flight. But somehow, all of them got on. And the pain, the pain that these kids were in the last day, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I really Did you even would. know that one was coming or just no, leaked out of your ass? out of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, I, w I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I mean, those kids can drink. Like, it's like an elderly person <laughs> <laughs> who just loses control of his bowels. Cause you just, cause you were just talking and it <laughs> just creeped out. Cause I got a big ass. It just creeped out. I mean, you're not civilized. It's you're what just, it is, you're right? Just that you're talking just, and you're <laughs> farting as you're talking. Because <laughs> I'm a fucking German piece of shit, right? Yeah, the thing is, when you're around girls, you just, you, first date, you do stuff like that, right? Well, I mean, I send, either I send three uh, paragraph messages or I pick my nose and fart. I mean, did you, did you have no control over that fart? <laughs> <laughs> just popped out. I mean, were you able to hear it on the? Yeah, I was. Yeah. Able, I don't know if they were able to hear it, but I mean, it sounded. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. pretty loud. I mean, you were talking. <laughs> your, your your facial expression didn't even change. <laughs> Yo, we gotta stop farting on this podcast. It's I don't immature. Think you can, I don't think you can help it, man. I think you're. It's you, cheap laughs. You don't have control over your bowels. It's just what it is. Oh God! But the thing was, you realized you were an American kid. American kid, you, red, white, and fucking blue, baby. You couldn't like, yeah, you don't even like. You don't even joke around about being German anymore. No, because it's just like what I saw, the atrocities. It's I mean, like Patty Flyball says, you can call me Irish, but I'm fucking American. American, that's what he said. I'm American. Yeah. It's yeah. like, you call me German, I'm fucking from the United States. And just even even just, you know, I, I, we all knew about the atrocities of, of what the Nazis did, but even just being in Germany, which I thought was a great country, and Austria was a great country, but it's just the United States, is just, we're number one, and everybody wants to come here for a reason. We're back, everybody. We had some technical difficulties that you don't even know about because we spliced it right back together. But we did go to Dachau, which I want to end the episode talking about because it was it was nothing really funny about it. There's nothing really to joke about. Um, it's one of the most moving and terrifying and shocking things any human being could ever lay eyes on. I, in Dachau, for the most part, it's well preserved as it was. Um, front gates are intact. Um, where all of the bunks? What do they call those where they slept? Um, Bunkers or yeah, the, dormitory? The, uh, I don't know. Dorms, they, yeah. They don't call them dorm. You know, whatever you know what, where they fucking packed them in. We call them the tents. Tents, whatever they slept. All, all of them are marked, and there's memorials there now. There's there's like one or two that are recreated, they rebuilt. But what is 100% intact is the part, you know, all the guard towers are 100% intact. Um, but the, the gas chamber, the crematorium, the ovens, it's, uh, it's all 100% the same. So meaning you're looking at, you're in a death chamber, man. When you're in there... It, it, you're there at the same place that all these atrocities happened. You know, now Dachau was not one of the bigger ones where they, they didn't kill as many people, but of course they had a gas chamber and crematorium there. They had the ovens. They had the gas chambers there. They killed a lot of people there. 
who knows, hundreds, thousands, not the millions like in Auschwitz, where it was millions. Auschwitz. Auschwitz. Auschwitz was millions. But when you're in there, man, you see how they did it, and it's just so spooky because it's exactly the same. You are looking exactly at what— The buildings are—I mean, talking about not replicas, the actual structures. The actual structures. Nothing's changed. So people have put—you know, those people who are walking up, put their hands on the places you put them, stood in the places that you stood— and what they did was it was a really devious, manipulative, and just evil way that they did this. It's just there's there's no humanity in it. They're lining these people up like cattle. So what they do well, is— Well, yeah, uh, uh, there's no humanity in it because what Jan's about to tell you, it's freaky. But what they—because what, they looked at them, the Germans looked at, like, Jews and homosexuals and non-Germans as slaves— or they would use their bones to fertilize cabbage fields. They had, so they were slaves and fertilizer to they, Nazis. It's fucking crazy when you when you think about that. Yeah. They grounded up the bones and used it as fertilizer, fertilizer. for the cabbage fields that were right next door to the fucking... It's gross. To, I mean, it's crazy. And then they, they made lampshades out of the skin. I mean, it's kind of out of a... Yeah. Like a serial killer's book. Like, how yeah. did this happen? Their hair, they would take, take shave their heads and, and keep their hair. Keep their hair. Like, they were using their body parts like they were animals. Like, you know, they, 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 it was inhumane. The fullest definition of inhumane to the fullest level 10 inhumanity was was the Germans and yeah. what they did in concentration. Because, because yeah, there's other, you know, uh, throughout history, like, you know, people get killed, slaves get killed, they're treated. But what they did was they didn't, they took all their, like Yana said, no dignity. I mean, they were using their, their parts as, like, pieces of machines. Like, it was just, there weren't human beings to them. They treated them like, like pigs or, or like cattle. I mean, literally like cows, like going through a slaughterhouse. So the way they would do it, um, because obviously they were aware, at least somewhat, that these are humans, and uh, humans get frantic, and uh, it's hard to control huge populations that are frantic. Um, so what they would do, brutal, is they would lie to them and tell them, the ones that were coming up for the gas chamber, um, they would say, hey, you're going into a mass shower. So they had these fake shower heads, which are still there, which is so well. And we so went... Wild. Me and Chris went into the gas chamber. This is the same gas chamber, not a recreation. We stood in the same place that these people stood. And I, I was having these visions. My imagination was just having these visions of what it must have been like the fear and just the claustrophobia. Because, first of all, the ceiling is real low. I mean, people were, I guess, a little shorter, but Germans are tall or whatever. I mean, it was, it's low. I mean, right. if you're six foot four, your head is touching the ceiling. That's how claustrophobic it is. And they would pack these people in maybe like what? A thousand could fit in there? Yeah. Pack where you couldn't move? Yeah. They would pack these people in there. They first make them take off their clothes in this one room. So you go in, there's this one room where you take off your clothes. And then they push them in and they say that they're showers and these fake shower heads on the ceiling. Um, and you go in and then they close these metal doors on both sides. And it's just dark in there. There's no light. There's nothing. The only light that was creeping in was the light from when those doors were open, and you could see the fake shower heads on the ceiling. And then they closed those metal doors that sealed, and then they just pumped the gas in. And Chris will tell you about how brutal the death is. Just imagine the screams. Just imagine the horror. Just imagine the lack of hope, knowing that there's no escape, and that you had this. This is what your final moments are going to be like. So yeah. So I, you know, I noticed the fake shower heads, and then I said, tour guide. I heard him say, oh, you know, and most people think that's a fake drain, but it's not. The drain was real because the way you would die. The drain on the floor. The drain on the floor was real because the way you died from that gas um, was it, all the fluid left your body, so you would uh, bleed, uh, you know, piss, you know, urinate, defecate, vomit. You would know what was happening to you, and take uh, the average person fifteen to twenty minutes to die. Can you believe so it's that? not like it's not like carbon monoxide where the lights just go out, you fall asleep, and you're dead. No, no, you physically you were in pain, and you you died. You were choking. Everyone in your you know you're watching your family members die, your loved ones, your friends, and people died at different speeds. So different speeds. People are dropping around you, and you know your neck. That's just you yeah. know it's coming. And if you and then what? And then after you were dead, after they would open up the doors, fit whatever it was, twenty minutes later, and put your bodies in the oven, and a good amount of people were not dead yet. 
they had no energy and they but they were still alive and they were then they were burned alive they would th- and incinerated they would th- whoever was miraculously still alive and just but like chris said no energy just kind of like but still breathing they would just throw those people in the ovens with the dead bodies yeah so then they took the dead bodies and little by little whatever could fit in the ovens they burned these people in these crematoriums in these ovens they burned the bodies after they've been gassed. And it was all set up like an assembly line. When you go in the building, it's like the first room is for them to take their clothes off and wait. Then there's the gas chamber right in the middle. And then the room after that is a room where they pile up the bodies. And then the room after that was the ovens. And I think there was two big ovens there. It is insane to see. It's, it, it's, it leaves an indelible impression in your mind. It's freaky. It's spooky. It stays with you. Um, I really think everyone should see it. You know, what the Russians did and the Americans did was when they discovered and liberated these camps, they forced German, they went and gathered all the German locals from those towns in Dachau, yeah. Auschwitz. They made them, which is a very good thing that they did, which is wild. They made all these people line up and go look at it. They didn't touch They didn't touch the, uh, the, the, the bodies or anything that were piled up there that the Germans had just abandoned. Because make no mistake, they left like, uh, you know, a 10-foot... Ten fucking foot high pile of emaciated dead bodies that were yet to be burned. And in some of the videos and images you can see, and they and they they marched the town people through to so they could see what their military was doing to people. Yeah, because a lot of the German people, like you know where Dachau was, that's a town. They, they or Auschwitz, these are towns. A lot of the German people claimed, and I don't know, you know, I, I, only they know that they didn't know what was going on. Because a, a lot of the war, a lot, because because it was so atrocious that even the people back in the U.S. didn't believe it. There were certain journalists that would write in the papers in the 40s about what the horrors that they saw at concentration camps, and they said, "No, you're you're lying. There's no way it's true." So a lot of people didn't believe it, including Winston Churchill and FDR and Truman. They just didn't believe it was happening until they actually started liberating the camps, and then that became a priority yeah they did a march and again it's just a time where people were just stronger and braver we weren't as cold as we are today i mean they would march these people from the train station which we took for the most part um and then they would march. we did the same exact with the bus that we took to dachau it was the same exact route that they would march all the prisoners, the Jews, the Romani, the homosexuals, a lot of political prisoners too. There was a lot of prisoners at Dachau who were just from opposing parties, actual German citizens um, and, and ethnic Germans because the Jews were German citizens too for the most part, especially in Dachau. But actual ethnic Germans they, and, and all of them, they would march through the town and they would plant German Nazis in the crowd to rowl up the people, and f- they forced the town people to heckle these people as they were coming through. So they would throw things at them. Yeah. And uh, and if you didn't heckle hard enough, you sometimes were thrown into the line to go into the concentration camp. So that's how fucking wild I mean, the, it was. The psychological warfare and the manipulation and propaganda that the Nazis used, that's how they really did all this. <laughs> Intimidation tactics, subterfuge. Spies, things like we just mentioned, they would do this. Like they would get into the crowd and rile the people up. And if you did not heckle these people, if you did not call them dirty Jews or whatever it was, like then they would put you in the prison. Yeah. So it was just by force, by fear, that they convinced these people to do this. Um, so it's wild, man. It is fucking wild. We got to see that, and uh, it changes you forever. It's just, it's a brutal. Everyone should go see it if you if you can. It wakes you up to how how horrible things can get, you know? You think you're civilized. Yeah. But it, we're really, it's it's a thin thread between between safety, comfort, yeah. good times, and that. I want to end on the story of the British um, soldiers who tried to parachute in there, which is wild. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was women, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a crazy story. It really is. That a lot of the people in the world. Why don't we don't do that know. on the Patreon? You want to do that on the Patreon? Yeah, do that on the Patreon. Wow, yeah, that's what you call a teaser right there. Teaser, yeah. Do that one on the pa- If you want to hear the, the story of the British uh, paratroopers who tried to liberate 
Don't Dachau tell Camp. I'm not going to tell don't him. Don't tell him too much. Try to liberate Dachau Camp. Then go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. And thank you guys so much for listening, being part of the matriarch. We actually have some new members. I don't have the list. Oh, yeah. You have the list today. We got these. What We want to read out loud the new members of the matriarch. And if you joined Patreon and became part of the matriarch, if you went to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys and joined the matriarch and we did not read your name, then just fucking DM the History Hyenas Instagram or DM Christy Comedy because Giannis will not respond and i will read your name on the podcast next week it's getting a little sloppy we're gonna get a full list but from what i can see i first want to shout out sean s-h-a-w-n he says please don't forget to name me in the podcast so this kid wants to get named you get named first Yeah. yeah you you are the fucking matriarch of the of the clan today so sean thank you sean good irish kid then we got Joan Rosa. Welcome to the matriarchy. Yeah. What kind of name is Rosa? Joan Rosa. Joan Rosa. She it sounds could like be a Italian ma- kid. It's Joan, not John. Joan. So it's a woman. I don't want to assume, though. I don't want to assume. But welcome, Joan Rosa. And then we got Jessica Tortes. Jessica Tortes. Chrissy, what do you think Jessica Tortes is? Tortes? You yeah. know what she is. She's Hispanic. She's Hispanic, poet, and if she has a tattoo on her tit, I'm calling her tomorrow. Yickety, yeah. Welcome to the matriarchy, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. Then we have uh, Edward Faney. Yeah. I mean, does it get that? I mean, that's the type of kid who sounds like he hold you down, and yeah. Faney? Yeah. That's an Irish kid. Yeah. There's What are the chances that this kid doesn't work for the city? Yeah, he's a fucking city worker. Edward Faney. And then we got Denton Gooden. That's a good name. That's, That's a good a, wasp name. No, no, no. That, that, that is an African-American. Let me look at his pick right here. I bet you he's a black kid. Denton? Denton Gooden? Like Dwight Gooden? I don't I mean, know. He's a black kid. Yo, welcome to the matriarchy, Denton. I like that name, Denton. Denton's a good name. Solid name. Yeah. All right, and then we got Jonathan Duenas. Yes. Whenever you see an N with the squiggly line over Latino. it, that comes with rest and peace. <laughs> a little tortillas, a little huevos con queso. W- welcome to the matriarch, Jonathan. Jonathan, by the way, same name as Giannis. So yeah. Gian- Giannis translates it just means John in English. So we got the same name, cuz. Yeah. Then we got, we got Leo P. Leo P., what's up? Uh, it's like a good graffiti Have you ever name. went by John in your life? Yeah, like, they used to call me John John. When? Uh, my friends, like Chad, will call me John John sometimes still. Interesting. Yeah, my buddies, uh, and yeah, like John John was like my nickname a little bit. But then Giannis just took, I like Giannis more because it's a little sexier. It's a little sexier than John. It's a little rarer in the United States. Giannis. Giannis. There's not too many Giannises, you know? Giannis. Now, of course, it's me and uh, Giannis. Atatatakakokokombo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and then Ali Boo deleted her five dollars. You know, we're gonna start shouting out the Allie people. Ali Boo deleted? Can you believe that? Why? She was a huge fan, and she's out now. Ali, it says Ali Boo deleted. We're gonna start. We're gonna start shouting out the people who deleted. Wow. We lost Ali Boo, and we lost Ken Marshall. Wow. These were big fans. Those were two biggies. I wonder what turned them off. Probably could have been the Catholic joke. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, we got Joel Nunez. And then, wow, thanks thanks for joining, Joel. Love you, cuz. Yeah, cuz. Joel Nunez. And then, of course, we got a German kid from Ridgewood, no doubt, Rob House. Yeah. House. H-A-U-S-E. How do you pronounce that? House. House. Yeah. So Rob House, oh, that's straight from Ridgewood, He's no? from Zoom Stompton. She works in the kitchen at Zoom's. <laughs> and then we got uh, David Marshall. Cute. That's a wasp, No. Marshall? Marshall, David yeah. Marshall? David Marshall. That sounds like it comes with moccasins with no socks. <laughs> and then we got Jay, cut, 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 cute. <laughs> <laughs> then we got Kashi Osakwi. Wow. Kashi Osakwi. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Japanese. Japani. Thank you, cuz. Kashi, thanks for joining, cuz. We love you, man. We love you, Kashi. Osakwi, that's Japanese, cuz. Oh, that's a Japanese. Yeah. And then we got Krista Matis. Uh, that sounds like a Greek. Tikanis Koritsaki. And then we got Bavuk Rishi. Rishi. Bavuk Rishi. Oh, Rishi. Rishi was a big fan. Indian. That means he deleted and pledged again. Oh, Rishi yeah. peanut butter cup. Yeah, so thank you all. If I missed anyone, just like Chris said, hit us up. But again, just want to emphasize, you want to hear the bonus podcast, join the matriarchy, patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. 
It really keeps us going, and we love your support, and we need it, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Yickety yeah. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Wei song xi ain't. Pizza.